from the gym guys good afternoon today i came over here <laughs> i came over to patshahi mosque this is old wall city of lahore it has a quite old history this food street is uh, beside the uh, mosque it's quite big food uh, food street bit expensive uh, do come over here with your friends and family for dining purpose one thing i would like to uh, tell to the entire world that pakistan is a peaceful country do visit pakistan whatever uh, case you have in the when it comes to the uh, travel or tourism for example if you love exploring mountainous regions valleys deserts uh, deep ocean deep sea uh, different type uh, different type of historical places You'll find everything in Pakistan. You will enjoy over here when you uh, when you come over here for a visit. Uh, for myself, if I talk to myself, if I talk about myself, I love exploring uh, exploring Pakistan inch by inch, bringing Pakistan to your home, but through my eyes. And. I'm here only to show the positive face of Pakistan, which our, uh, unfortunately our media is not true. So guys, I'm feeling hungry. What I ordered for myself is a chicken piece along with a garlic bread. Along with garlic bread. So Salim Bamajmur and Salim Mehrezi, you come over to Pakistan. Pakistan is ready to say welcome to you, both guys. So, Talk to you very soon. Till then, goodbye. Allah Hafiz. Assalamualaikum. Good evening, guys. Starting the vlog. Entering into the Badshahi Mosque. Badshahi Mosque was built during a Mughal era. The mosque is located uh, to the west of Lahore Fort, along the outskirts of the old walled city of Lahore, and it is considered as one of the most iconic landmark of Lahore. Badshahi Mosque was built by a Mughal emperor Aurangzeb in 1671 and it took two years for the construction process to complete. That means it completed in 1673. The mosque is, is an example, important example of Mughal architecture with an exterior that is decorated with carved sand, stone, with marble inlay. It remains the largest mosque of the Mughal era and is the second largest mosque in Pakistan. After the fall of the Mughal Empire, the mosque was used as a garrison by the Sikh Empire and British Empire as well, which I'm going to discuss later on. But at the moment, it is one of the Pakistan's most iconic sites, as I mentioned earlier. Now guys, coming to the location of the Bad Shahi Mosque. Uh, it's located adjacent to the wall city of, uh, of Lahore. The entrance to the mosque lies on the west side of the rectangular Hazuri Park and, fam and, fa and faces the famous Alamgiri Gate of the Lahore Fort as well. Which, uh, which is located on the east side of the Hazuri Bagh. The mosque is also located next to the Roshnai Gate, one of the original 13 gates of Lahore that still stands today in, it, in its original uh, condition. And it is located to the south side of the Hazuri Bagh. Near the entrance of the mosque lies the tomb of uh, Dr. Alama Iqbal, a poet and a founder of the Pakistan movement, which led to the creation of Pakistan as a homeland for the Muslims of British India. Also ne uh, no located near the mosque is the tomb of Sir Sikandar Hayat, the personality who played a vital role in preservation and restoration of the mosque. Now coming back to the background of this mosque, detailed by Iran, the sixth Mughal emperor, uh, emperor Aurangzeb, 
chose Lahore as the site for his new imperial mosque. Aurangzeb, unlike the previous emperor, was not a major patron of art and architecture and instead focused during uh, his period on various military uh, con uh, conquests which added over 3 million square kilometers to the Mughal rule. The mosque was built to commemorate Aurangzeb's military campaigns in South India, in particular uh, against the Maratha king Shivaji. As a symbol of the mosque importance, it was built directly across from the Lahore fort and its Alamgiri gate, which was concurrently built by Aurangzeb during the construction of the mosque. The mosque was commissioned by Mughal Emperor Aurangzeb in 1671 with construction overseen by the Emperor's foster brother and that time he was governor of Lahore as well, Muzaffar Hussain, also known as Fidai Khan Koka. Aurangzeb had the mosque built in order to commemorate his military campaigns, campaigns against the Maratha king uh, Chaturpati Shivaji. After only two years of construction, the mosque was opened in 1673. Now comes the Sikh era. On 7th of July 1799, the Sikh army of Raja Ranjit Singh took the control over Lahore. After the capturing of the city, Maharaja Ranjit Singh used uh, the vast courtyard of a mosque as a stable for his army horses and its 80 hujras uh, as quarter, servant quarter or uh, uh, accommodation for his soldiers and as magazines for military stores. In 1818, he built a marble edifice in the Hazuri Bagh facing the mosque known as the Hazuri Bagh Baradari which he used as his ro official royal court of audience. Marble slabs for the Baradari may have been plundered by the Sikh from other monuments in Lahore. During the first Anglo-Sikh war in 1841, Ranjit Singh, son Sher Singh used the mosque large minarets for placement of Zamb Zamburas or light guns which were used to bombard the supporters of Chand Kaur, who had taken refuge in the besieged Lahore fort. In one of these bombardments, the force Divani Arm, the uh, Divani Arm uh, means hall of public audience, was destroyed, but was subsequently rebuilt in the British era. During this time, Henri de la Roche, a French cavalry officer employed in the army of Sher Singh, also used a tunnel connecting the Pachai Mosque to the Lahore fort to store the gunpowder. In 1848, the Samadhi of Raja Ranjit Singh was built up uh, for the Sikh ruler. Uh, Ranji Singh at a site immediately adjacent to the mosque after his death. Not coming to the British rule. In, 1850, uh, in 1849, the British seized control of Lahore from the Sikh Empire. During the British Raj, the mosque and their joining fort continued to be used as a military garrison. The 80 cells built into the walls surrounding it was courtyard were demolished by the British after the Indian Rebellion of 1857 so as to prevent them from being used for anti-British activities. The cells were replaced by open arcades known as the lawns. As there was an increase in Muslim resentment against the use of the mosque as a military garrison, the British set up the Pakshi Mosque Authority in 1852 to oversee the restoration and to re-establish it as a place of really religious worship. From then onwards, piecemeal 
repairs were carried out under the supervision of the Pachai Mosque Authority. The building was officially handed back to the Muslim community by John Lawrence, who was the Wazir of India. The building was then re-established as a mosque. In 1919, after the Amritsar massacre, a mixed Sikh, Hindu and Muslim crowd of an estimated 25 to 35,000 gathered in the mosque courtyard in protest. A speech by Gandhi was read at the event by Khalifa Shujauddin, who later became Speaker of the Provincial Assembly of the Punjab. Extensive repairs commenced from 1939 onwards when Sikandar Hayat Khan began raising funds for this purpose. Renovation was supervised by the architect Nawab Alam Yar Jang Bahadur as Khan was largely credited for extensive restorations to the mosque, he was buried adjacent to the mosque in the Hazuri Park. Now coming to post-independence. Restoration works began in 1939 and continued after the independence of Pakistan and were completed in 1960 at a total cost of 4.8 billion rupees. On the occasion of the Second Islamic Summit held at Lahore on, 20, on 22 Feb 1974, 39 heads of Muslim states offered their Friday prayers in the Pashahi Mosque, including, among others, like Zulfikar Ali Bhutto of Pakistan, Faisal of Saudi Arabia, Muammar Gaddafi of Libya, Yasser Arafat, Palestine, and Sabatri al Salim al Sabah of Kuwait. These prayers, the prayers were led by Molana Abdul Qadir Azad, the then Khatib of the mosque. In 1993, the Bath Mosque, in a tentative list as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, in 2000, the Marble Inlay in the main prayer hall was repaired. In 2008, replacement work on the red sandstone. Sorry, on the red sandstone tiles on the la on the most large courtyard was begun using red sandstone imported from the original Mughal source near Jaipur in the Indian state of Rajasthan. Gazia so would like to discuss on the architect of the mosque as well. As a gateway to the West and Persia in particular, Lahore had a strong regional style which was heavily influenced by the Pers Persian architectural styles. Earlier mosques such as the Mosque uh, Wazir Khan uh, were adorned in intricate Kashikari or Kashan style tile work from which the Bachai Mosque would depart. Aurangzeb chose an architectural plan similar to that of Shah Jahan's choice for the Jame Masjid in Delhi. Though built the Bachir Mosque on a much larger scale, both mosques feature red sandstone with white marble inlay, which is a departure from the typical mosque design in Lahore, in which decoration is done by means of integrate tile work. Now coming to entryway of the complex. Entrance to the mosque complex is via a two-story edifice built of red stone which is elaborately decorated with frame and carved paneling on each side of its facades. The edifice feature a uh, Mukarna, an architect architectural feature from the Middle East that was first introduced into Mughal architecture with construction of the nearby and ordinate Wazir Khan Mosque. The mosque full name Masjid Abdul Zafar Mayuddin Muhammad Alam Gir Badshah Ghazi is written in inlaid marble above the vaulted entrance. The mosque gateway 
faces east towards the Alamgiri gate of the Lahore fort, which was also commissioned by the Aurangzeb. The massive entrance and mosque are situated on a plinth which is ascended by a flight of 22 steps at the mosque's main gateway. The gateway itself contains several chambers which are not accessible to the public nowadays. One of the rooms is said to contain hairs from the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and that of his son-in-law, Hazrat Ali radiallahu anhu. When William Morecroft of England gave a visit to Lahore in 1820, he recorded that the Bachelor Mosque was being used as an exercise ground for the, the Sipahi infantry. Uh, he wrote about the Sikhira. And he, men and he mentioned that 20 years later, a moderate earthquake struck Lahore and collapsed the delicate marble turrets at the top of each minaret. The open turrets were used as gun emplacement. A year later, when Ranjit Singh, son Shir Singh, occupied the mosque to bombard Lahore fort during the Sikh Civil War. So, now coming to the courtyard of the mosque, after passing through the massive gate and expensive sandstone paved courtyard spreads over an area of 276 square feet, which can accommodate 100,000 worshippers at a time. Even this mall acts as a Eidgar during the Eid prayer time. Green Hall, the main edifice at the site, was also built from red sandstone and is decorated with white marble inlay. The prayer chamber uh, has a central arched uh, niche with five niches flanking it, uh, which are about one-third the size of the central niche. The mosque has about uh, three marble domes, the largest one of which is located in the center of the mosque and which is flanked by two smaller domes. Both the interior and exterior of the Bachelor Mosque are decorated with elaborate white marble carved with a floral design common to the Mughal art. The carvings at Bachelor Mosque are considered to be uniquely fine and unsurpassed works of Mughal architecture. The chambers on each side of the main chamber contain rooms which were used for religious instruction. The mosque can accommodate 10,000 worshippers in the prayer hall. Now coming to Minaret, at each of the four corners of the mosque, there are octagonal three-story minaret made of red sand stone that are 196 feet and almost 60 meter. Uh, 196 feet equals almost 60 meter with an outer circumference of 67 feet and inner circumference is 8 and half feet. Each minaret is topped by a marble canopy. The main building of the mosque also features an additional four smaller minarets at each corner of the building. The interior of the mosque is embellished with intricate floral motifs. And one thing I like about this mosque that people usually come over here large in numbers to visit it and uh, they pray over here in, in our Jama. And I today myself uh, during the visit of this mosque, uh, I found myself lucky because uh, in the past also also I gave a visit to this mosque but never got a chance to pray over here. Today I felt peaceful and blessed that I prayed in this mosque. So guys.
See you at some other location very soon. Till then, Allah Hafiz, goodbye and take care of your uh, loved ones and those who are around you.